and amen. Lord, please preserve a matching robe and crown. And we are looking forward to that crown of life mm -hmm. that God has reserved for them that love him. Right. God has reserved for them that are faithful unto death. And God has reserved for them to endure until the end. There's a crown of life that is waiting for those who are willing to wait on the Lord and mount their way to that evil as well. Mm -hmm. We just thank the Lord this afternoon for another opportunity. I know that many have been to fellowship and many have been in Bible class already and not going to hold you long. <coughs> My wife told me to preach a sermon next. Uh, but I, I don't know what I'm going to preach, a sermon yet or what, but I'm going to preach the word, right? Uh, you know, how the Spirit leads me, I, I'm, I'm not going to hold you long now, but I don't know about a sermon yet. Uh, I guess you want to do a 10 minute sermon to sit down. But anyway, uh, I know you're tired, and I know you've been on a long, 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 long trip today, but we, we want to preach the word of God. God calls said, preach the word. Be in season, out of season, reprove, reprove, exhort with all long suffering doctrine. I looked around as I come back into town. I saw a lot of church doors that were shut, even though they're the nomination deal. Uh, people don't have even service like they used to. Uh, they don't have time for uh, God anymore like they used to. Uh, but we know that they are the nomination deal. And there are a lot of Lord churches that are shutting their door. Uh, they are sitting in their ivory couches out on Sunday morning, taking the ease as well. But we know this is the day of the Lord, and, and we should cut God short because of the thing that we want to do on the Lord's day. This is the Lord's day as well. Uh, but this afternoon, we go back to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 2. Uh, this should be a, uh, a sermon that we're going to try to wind up this afternoon. As we talk about the seven churches of Asia, uh, there were seven churches in Asia as well. They all were the same church. Uh, they were located in Asia, and Paul writes to the same church. Uh, they were in different locations. Uh, they were some in, in, in Ephesus, some in Spire, Pergon as well, some in Tartara, some in Philadelphia, some in Lycia, some in Sardis. But they all were the same church in different locations. They all were guided by the same Spirit as well, who was the Holy Spirit. And John sent the same letter to the, uh, to send the letter from the Spirit to the churches of Asia as well. So all these churches, they had, they most of them had different problems, and but only two that not God was pleased with. And that was the church of Sardis, uh, the church of Sparta, and the church at Philadelphia as well. But if we look at the seven churches, which is the seven candlestick, that God said, I'll remove the candlestick if you don't repent. But God command man to repent. Because this time, when I, when I say the seven churches were the same church, one but one church. And as I said on last week, uh, that, that the church of the Lord was, uh, was, six, it was 600 years old before any other non non Catholic church came in in 606 AD. Yeah, I talked about last week how that in, 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 in the 1500s, Martin Luther, who found 95 theses against the Catholic Church, he nailed them on the door of the Catholic Church. He started the Roman, he started the Church of the Luther. But one thing he reminded his people that when they began to uh, want to call the church Lutheran, he said, Don't call yourself Lutheran. He said, I didn't die for you, neither will I crucify you. But the people went on them anyway and called themselves Lutheran as well. So you got the Church of Lutheran today as well. Then you got the Church of the Baptist by John Spike was started in 1611, 1611 which John Spike started in Harlem, uh, in, in Harlem as well. These are man-made organizations. But the Church of Asia was a church that was established by the Apostle and they had some issues going on and John Wright to the church on the day of persecution. But we look at the Church of Pergon here, we find in chapter 2 uh, we see here that uh, the church here in chapter 2 and begin at verse number 12 and we're going to look at verse 14 pretty hard in the lesson will be your in verse 16 as well. We look at chapter 2 verse number 12 to the angel of the church Pergonus write these things to he which have the sword sharp sword with the two edged 
We know God's word is a sharp, two-edged sword, right? According to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, Ephesians chapter 6 as well. The word of God is a sword as well. He said, I know your words where you not well, even in where Satan seek ill. And the church was where Satan seek was. It was where the Roman emperor was. It was where Satan seek was. And Christians at that time were still being persecuted for their testimony. And, and so we see here that one of the faithful martyrs was killed because of, of their faithfulness and because of their testimony. So we see in verse also, in verse 14, he said, but I have a few things against thee, but thou have, have, has there, I have a few things against thee, because thou have, thou had there them who hold the doctrine of Balaam. Now he said, I have a few things against you. But God didn't have a lot against them, because he knew that they, they had not denied the faith, even in the midst of a uh, persecution, because he said, you have not denied the faith. Now watch what he says here in verse 13. He said, I know your work where you dwell, even where Satan seek ill. Satan seek ill. And Satan got seat in a lot of cities as well. You know, some people call Las Vegas the sin city as well. Uh, because so much go on in Las Vegas. But thank God no persecution are going on in Las Vegas. But this time, children of God were being persecuted uh, for the cause of Christ. And here's a faithful man, but persecuted for the cause of Christ. But one thing God said about them was good, that they had not denied the faith. They had not denied the name, right? But God still has something against them. Just a few things against them. And what they were allowing going on in the church was they were like worldly is going on in the church. They were holding on to the doctrine of Balaam and Balak and also Nicolaitan as well, are the doctrine of, 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 of Nicolaitan said, even though you are a Christian, then you still can participate in these worldly things. That was the doctrine of man. But God said, I have something against it. You cannot participate in worldlyism. As Christians, we got to come out among the world. We got to separate ourselves. So the doctrine of Nicolaitan was teaching that you can still worship idols. You can still go to the temple of idols. And for God's I have something against you. So as Christians, we have to understand when we are in, in the Lord, we cannot practice the teaching of man. Just like today, the doctrines of man. The Bible talks about the doctrine, commandments of man, right? The teachings of man as well. So here we see the doctrine also of man was teaching in the church and they were allowing it to go on as well. And this is what God had against them as well. We look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Know what the Bible says here as he write to uh, the church at Corinth. Uh, we find that God tell uh, the Christian in Corinth that they must come out among them and be what? Ye separated, said the Lord. As Christians, we cannot run with the world, even though the doctrine say once say always say you can do what you want to do, you're still going to heaven as long as you believe. That sounds good, don't it? I can live like I want to live, but I'm still going to heaven. That's not the teaching of Jesus Christ, right? But you must understand that when we are Christian, we must come out among them. We cannot go in places the world go. We have to, we have to separate ourselves as well. You know, somebody said, well, there's nothing wrong with going in this casino. Well, you, you, you all have to want to go to the casino. God said, worthy activity as well. You have to separate yourself from those type of things. But you have been called out from those type of things. Christian are a different type of people as well. So God said here that even though the doctrine of Nicolaitan was saying that you still can be saved, you still can do what you want to do, but in the church we're allowing it to happen. As Christians, we must stand on what is right. Even we might have to suffer for standing on what is right, but in, at the end, we're going to be rewarded at the end by God. Now, if we're not willing to suffer for him, then we know, must understand we're not going to reign with him as well. But there are some things we must come out among them as well. Now, watch the word of God in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Know what the word of God says. Watch me what the word of God say. Let's look at verse 14. And we're talking to Christians now. I talk about this uh, in Dumas today. The the hold it for a minute. I talk about in Dumas today that there are three types of men the Bible mentioned in this chapter in, in Corinthians. He talk about the natural man. He talk about the spiritual man. He talk about the carnal man. 
And there, there are cut out in the church today as well. And there are, there are some spiritual people in the church, but there are uh, more carnal people in the church than there are spiritual people in the church. And the natural man is the base man. We all, we all represent the natural man because we are all cover the image of Adam as well. So we all are, have that flux of the nature, but we all don't have to be carnality. When we are transformed, we have been born again, we can grow to be spiritual as well. Now watch the word of God. Notice my look at verse number 14. Know what it says? Be not unequally yoked together. Now notice that be not unequally yoked together believer, right? So what these Christians were doing, they were well in the seat of Satan. And these Christians would hold on to the doctrine of a man, and they were going into these temples, still worshiping, and the church wasn't doing anything about it. And God said, I have something against you. And what God had against them was the doctrine of Nicolaitan who, who were teaching that it's all right to worship idol and sacrifice things to idol and you're still all right with God. But you must understand that we, got, we can't have fellowship with, with unbelievers, right? That we can't go, go into places and have fellowship with those unbelievers and places that Christians don't, have, don't need to be. I know it don't sound good. You know, it don't sound good. Well, somebody said, I'm just going to get some breakfast. Uh -huh. But someplace you don't need to be. As a Christian, right? Because who you represent is who? God, right? And when you represent God, even though your teaching might be good, but then your good can be evil spoken of as well, right? And you don't want to call nobody to stumble because your teaching might be good. And by the Bible, don't let your good be what? Evil spoken of, right? Somebody said, well, I don't see no harm in it. Well, you have to understand, you have to show love for other people. Right. I, I, I know I go to preach the sermon there, I'm going to sit down. But I won't go to some more stuff too, but I'm not going to it, but it'll take a little longer. But, but the Bible said we got to come out among them, right? And what? Be separated, said the Lord, right? And since it, it, it said we can't run with the world and go into where the place is and expect for God to receive us. See, God has called us out of that, right? right. Out of the world, right? And he called to the kingdom of what? His dear son, right? So what Paul is saying to the drink, with the drink, you cannot go into the outer temple and sacrifice things to out. And even though you're a child of God, you have to come my own as well. And we have the same today, you must come on the world. I'm not saying we're in the world, but we don't have to act like the world. Amen. We have to do the things of the world. Uh, we can be friends, we can be friendly to the world, but to the system, the thing of the world that is wrong, we must stand against. That's right. So not, you can have a world friend, but you must stand against what is wrong and come among the things of the world that is wrong and show people that you belong to God as well. Amen. So he said, God, we go with the unbelievers, right? right? Read. For what fellowship has with righteousness? Righteousness. Unrighteousness. With unrighteousness. So he said, what fellowship? You know, because see, a Christian mindset is different. A Christian mindset is in the mind of Christ. His life is different. So you don't have really nothing in common because you walking in the light, they walking in darkness, and so y'all don't have nothing in common. Oh, no. So you are different. So what fellowship does darkness have with light? What fellowship does light have with darkness? Well, the doctrine of the lady was saying that it was all right to go, and the church was not saying anything about it. We're allowing it to happen. So God said, I have something against you. That's a free thing. So can we? And what communion have light? Light what? Dark. With darkness. So light and darkness are gonna come. You show you cut the you cut the lights off, it's gonna be dark. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you cut these lights on, darkness what? Leave. Leave, right? So light and darkness are what? Nothing what? In common, right? Well, I'm trying to get you to see that when we come out of the world, call out of the world, we are called out of the world, not to go back into the world, into the world of things. <coughs> we live in this world. Mm -hmm. But we are not to go back to those worthy things. We are called out from those things. Mm -hmm. There's something Christians do not participate in. Amen. Because God has called you out. Well, say, I'm just going to sit down. <laughs> you shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. Because you have nothing in common there. Mm -hmm. As well, right? You right. know, sometimes you know, the devil make us all make excuses why we are doing certain things. But we know that, 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 that while we are there, we are there for a reason. 
And, and that's why the Bible says evil communication could work what? Good, Good matter, right? So he said, what fellowship does light and darkness have what? In common, right? Read. And what from poor has Christ? And Christ? In the Bible, that means idol, right? Read, go ahead. And what part have he? So, so you, you can't, Paul said, you can't go worship idol, then have fellowship with the Lord. Even though Jesus Christians have been born again, but they had all came up out of the world. And we got a lot of Christians like that today. They've been born again. They've given their life to, they said they give their life to Christ, but they are still in, in worldly things. Mm -hmm. But you have to come among them. Now watch what it says, read. And what part of he that believeth was in our infinite? Infinite, read. And what if the grievance had the temple of God? The temple of God. The idol, right? The temple of God. The temple of God is the church. What mm -hmm. well, agree with the temple of idols, right? The idol. See, see, the Gentile world was still worshiping idols. So when those Christians were called out of darkness into the modern light, some of them were still going to those idols temple. When we are called out of, of, of darkness into the modern light, we got to leave those word of things. Somebody said, bro, share. I'm still dealing with that. Wait, keep working on it. Come out among it. We're not going to condemn you, but we want you to know that God said you have to come out among it and be what? You separated, right? Watch the word of God read. For ye are the temple of the living God. You are the temple of the living God, right? So idols and God have nothing to come and show you the example. Now, let me show you the example. In 1 Samuel chapter 6, and the idol, the idol of God have nothing in common. When the Philistines mm -hmm. captured that ark of covenant, they put it in where their idol of God was. Mm -hmm. And what happened when they put the ark of covenant in where their gun was, their guns fell and broke. Mm -hmm. They have nothing in common. Mm -hmm. Then the Philistines said, let us get rid of the ark of God and they put it on a cart. And as they put it on a cart, they were carrying it back to the house of God. And as I saw the cart stumble, it should have been on staff. Let me show you something. There are some things that the world do, we can't do. For an example, the Philistines touched the Ark of Covenant. But the children of God can touch it only but the Levitical. They touched it, but they didn't die. But those who touched it, who are not authorized children of God, they died. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the world, you're not considered a child of God. But when you come into the kingdom of God, and you are considered a, God, a child of God, then you must abide by the laws of God and the rules of God if you want to please God, right? Because mm -hmm. so you're what? You're in the world. And when I'm in the world, I do a lot of sinful things. Because of the world, right? But when I come into the church, I must learn how to deny myself and die to those things and learn to live to please God as well. Now, what about the last part of that? Look at what it says. For ye are the temple of the living God. I can discern it. No, you are the temple of what? Of the living God. Of the living God. See, we are God's temple. See, God lives in us. He don't live in this building right here. We are the church of the living God. Mm -hmm. We are the house of God. And God lives in us. And God and ours don't have nothing in common. Amen. Nothing in common. Amen. Nothing in common. Why well, read? If God has said, God has said, I will dwell in them. I will dwell in them. And you want God to dwell in them, you have to do something. If you still participate in these worldly things that before you became a Christian, you have to come out with them. If you still doing those word of things, God is saying you, you have to come out. Right. Even though God has saved you in baptism as a child of him, God is still telling you, as you tell the Corinthians, you have to come among them and be what? You separate, said the Lord, and I will what? Receive you. That's what the book said, dog. Read. I will walk in them. I will walk in them. And I will be their God. Be their God, right? Read. And they shall be my people. They shall be my people, right? So in order for us, for God to receive us, for God to walk in us, for us to be a people of God, we must come out among them. So the Dr. Nicolay was saying that you can participate in these words of practice until it's all right. That's the doctrine commandment of man. That's why the Bible tells us to touch not, chase not, handle not. 
The doctrine commandment of man, which is what? To perish, right? That's man-made doctrine. So we need, we need to understand, we need to abide in the doctrine of what? Of Jesus Christ. So let's keep in mind, God's I have a few things that, is a, that I have against you. You hold on to the doctrine. The doctrine of man. He said, I, I want you to repent. If you repent, I will not remove the candlestick. And every Christian must understand when we are doing those things, we are still out there in the world, God is calling for us to repent. <coughs> repent. Come back to him. And let God live in your life, live in your heart. And God says, I will be your God. You should be my son. You should be my daughters as well. So let's keep in mind as well that God says, when you overcome, see, you will heal the hidden mammal. That mammal is where it's in heaven, right? Not only will we heal the tree of life, but the God will heal the hidden mammal that's where it's in heaven, right? So, so we must understand that God has promised us that we overcome it, stay faithful. Until the end, you're going to give us a crown of life. Yeah. Let that be sure it's with you. The lesson is yours. The Christian life might seem to be a suffering life. I got to give some things for Christ. As I told you this morning, it's a rewarding life as well. Yeah. And that reward don't have, cannot compare to nothing of this world can offer what God has in store for you. Paul said, I reckon this present moment that the things you eat will be faith is a light of affliction. Compared to the thing that God has in store for us. So we must understand that what God has waiting on us in heaven is worth suffering in this life for a better life on the other side. All right. And there's a life on the other side for the children of God. But you're willing to reign suffer with him. If he suffer, we're going to suffer. Yes. If, if, if he had denied the things of this world, we must deny the things of this world. We have better things waiting for us. And those better things is in heaven. So he did overcome it. So he is the man. He overcome it. He the tree of life as well. And God said, also, he said, I will, in very point, I will write my name, his name on my forehead, on his forehead. We are the children of God. I want to say to you this afternoon, if you're here and you're not a Christian, and I know I need to speak to somebody and sit down. Uh, if you're here and uh, you're not a Christian, <laughs> And you want to be saved, and uh, how to come to the Lord. The sermon next, I'm good to it now. But then my wife told me coming back, and told me to preach the sermon next this evening. But uh, but uh, but uh, I, I know I preach at Dumas and preach this morning, preach at Tallest Sunday School. I, I've been working, I've been working. And, but uh, I just pray that I say something to help someone understand that we got to come out among the other world. And, and, and God, God will receive us. And so let's keep that in mind. If you're here and you're not a Christian, like we have all Christians here this afternoon, if you're here and you need prayer, uh, the prayer of the righteous availeth much. You might say, you might need prayer, but Lord, give me the strength. I'm dealing with some things. I'm still kind of worried about it. But Lord, I want to be what you would have me to be. I want the saints to pray for me. I, I want to be the child you want me to be. And Lord, I'm praying that my, 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 my brother and sister will pray for me, that I may get stronger and be a better person as I strive to live this Christian life. God will help you when you try to help yourself. Something you have to ask God and say, Lord, help me, Lord. I'm struggling. I was telling my Sunday school class this morning. I was telling them, I said, we're talking about dreams. I said, I dreamed last night, and I told them, I said, I dreamed I was preaching so hard. I saw the old pioneer preachers, but that just was a dream. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you that God was speaking to me last night. <laughs> but that's a dream, and the Bible may have a dream, what? Yeah. Tell it as a dream, right? That's a dream. I preached so hard last night in my sleep. That's what I'm about little preaching, don't you? That I saw some old pioneer preachers in my sleep. So let's tell you that when you tell, uh, tell a dream, tell us a dream. But speak my word faithfully as well. And I'm going to tell you God was speaking to me. I'm going to let you know that you can't dream dream. And know, know sometimes those dreams come true. They come true. If you're here, you want to be saved, what you want to try.